Okay, so now back to the color part of how this works. The wavelength of light associated with uh, delta zero, the crystal field splitting energy, is often in the visible range. And so we were just talking about on the last slide, so we had nickel uh, two plus, and it was part of the complex ion with the ammonia. And we had the electrons one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And what we want to say now is that when you add a wavelength of light, similar to things that we saw in Gen Chem 1, you can promote one electron from the lower energy site uh, state or the lower energy, the orbital, 3D orbital, to the higher one. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and it doesn't matter where we put it. Let's put it right there. Um, we create an excited state. Uh, we have the ground state here. And that is what's called uh, how an atom absorbs light in this case, an ion. And that uh, absorb light is often in the visible region. And it turns out that when you absorb light in the visible region, that um, you also appear a different color in the visible region. You appear a different visible color. And so that's another part of this. We've been talking about this too. Um, and Gen Chem 1 in particular, uh, and, well, actually Gen Chem 2 mostly, but a little bit in Gen Chem 1, Gen Chem 1. And so uh, here we have nickel with six uh, ammonias in the octahedral geometry, and that will appear a blue color and that is because it absorbs a different wavelength. And remember, this is for octahedral crystal field. We can do the same thing for other electron geometry. This one's for tetrahedral. And uh, you'll see now that the crystal field splitting energy is different. We've got two down below and three above. And that's because if you look at the positions of the electrons from the ligands, remember the electrons from the ligands are a little pink, and then the orbitals from the metal ion, which are in the center here, you can see there's a difference between how close the ligands approach. And you can see overall, the ligands are farther from the orbitals then for octahedral, that generally does lead to a smaller crystal field splitting energy. And this is for tetrahedral. And we can do this for all of them. In fact, one of the homework questions does ask us to do this and actually draw these pictures. So look for that. Here's the d orbitals for several geometries including octahedral, which we've already talked about, tetrahedral, which we've talked about as well, uh, square planar with its one very high d orbital in energy. Uh, and let's see, um, the other one we have to worry about is not on here, it's linear. And maybe that's the one that we will talk about at some point. So uh, this will be given on the exam. Uh, given. So this is not something that you have to memorize. It is something that you have to know how to use for all of these different ones. And uh, in general, you don't, let's see this. So we said that we're going to be principally dealing with uh, coordination numbers of two, four, and six. Then we told you that for four, there was tetrahedral and square planar. 
And let's see, uh, square planers right here, tetrahedrons right there. In general, you can look at a compound, Ag, NH3, two, and tell what its coordination number is. This one has a coordination number of two. If we go back here, uh, here we have a coordination number of six, and the formula helps tell you what the shape is and which of these orbitals to use. Uh, let's see, was there a four one back here? This was octahedral as well. Well, oh yeah, the cis platen. It was four, so you know based on this formula that there are four ligands. Therefore, it has to be either square planar or tetrahedral. And you have no way of knowing which one it is. So don't worry about that. But do, like I can give you a formula and expect you to know which of these to use based on the formula, unless it's four. If it's four, then I have to tell you tetrahedral or square planar. Okay? Um, so now how do we use this? So this one says that cobalt with a uh, four of the thiocyanate ligands with the N attached. Uh, that's what the N means, it's closest to the cobalt. Uh, thiocyanate, by the way, is a negative one ion, and it does have the N as the donor of the pair of electrons in the Lewis base uh, to the cobalt. So we have four of them, that's four minus, Therefore, cobalt has to be two plus. So now we know the charge on the cobalt ion because that's going to be important. To tell us how many electrons the cobalt has. Uh, the questions we're asking is what is its electron configuration? Is it paramagnetic or diamagnetic? And uh, so let's tackle that. Cobalt atom is right here. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven electrons. There we go. So cobalt atom. There's going to be argon, 4s2, 3d7. Good. Then we have cobalt 2 plus ion, argon, 3d7. So we keep those seven 3d electrons. We've been told that it's tetrahedral. So we go back to our tetrahedral. We have tetrahedral crystal field theory splitting right here. And uh, we don't have to write down each of the D orbitals names, but we do have to write down two down and three up. Uh, oh, so uh, one, two, one, two, three. And we have seven electrons to put into them. And so let's go ahead and do that. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That is the electron configuration. And I realize that's a vague question. But on your exam, it will say, what is its electronic configuration accounting for crystal field theory? And the homework will have some that are pre-crystal field theory to just make sure we know how to do electron configuration. And it'll be obvious from the question. Um, and then it will have you actually putting the electrons into the crystal field theory uh, orbital splitting patterns like this here. Uh, so that is what we're looking for for the electron configuration. Is it paramagnetic or diamagnetic? Well, at least one unpaired electron means it's paramagnetic. And actually, sometimes we'll ask you paramagnetic with how many unpaired electrons? With three unpaired electrons. And our story is building. We're getting there. We can now answer this question based on the information that we've been given.